Hello and welcome to today's lesson on continuous flow heating, which is part of the thermal physics topic in AQA A level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you can measure the specific heat capacity of a substance by using continuous flow heating. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to explain how work can be done into an internal energy of a system. We can define the specific heat capacity of material, then we're going to look at ways to measure the work done into the energy of a system using the internal energy. So we're going to look at the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.6.2.1 Thermal Energy Transfer. Now the equation that links work done in an internal system and the resultant temperature change of the substance is delta Q is equal to MC delta T, where delta Q is the energy transferred, the heat energy transferred, M is the mass of the substance, C is the specific heat capacity, and delta T is the change in the temperature of the substance. Now carrying out work into the system, either placing heat into or out of the system, can cause a change in the kinetic energy store of the object internal energy and thus a change in temperature. Now let's just note that delta Q is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms and delta T is measured in kelvins. But because delta T is a temperature change you could actually also use degrees Celsius as well as Kelvin because the change, uh, temperature change for Celsius and Kelvin is the same value. Now we can define the heat capacity as the energy supplied to a substance to change the particle movement of, this, of the particles I'm making up to make a temperature change of one Kelvin. So the specific heat capacity is the energy needed to raise one kilogram of a substance by one Kelvin without changing state. So the specific heat capacity is the link between the kinetic energy store change of the object's internal energy and the resultant change in temperature of the substance that this causes. Now the larger the specific heat capacity, the more work is needed to be done to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. Now the larger the specific heat capacity, the more kinetic energy which is stored as internal energy per increase in temperature. Now it's important to note that an object with a higher specific heat capacity will store more kinetic energy per temperature change, so will have more internal energy. So an object with a high specific heat capacity will store more kinetic energy per temperature change, so it'll have more internal energy. So the object will be a larger kinetic energy store and have particles moving on average at a higher speed compared to that object with a lower specific heat capacity. But how can we measure this specific heat capacity? Well, we can use something called continuous flow heating. And this is the process of heating a fluid by having it flow continuously over a heater. So what what you can see is that water flows in to the substance, okay, it then flows across the heater and then the water flows out of the substance. Now as the water or any fluid flows, the energy is transferred from the heater to the fluid. Now we can there ca therefore calculate either the specific heat capacity of the fluid, the work done by the heater or the power of the heater. Now it's important to note that calculations involving continuous flow heating can be simplified by assuming the heat transfer from the heater is 100% efficient. Now this can be assured by making sure there's a good thermal contact between the heater and the fluid, which can be used by using a small amount of oil uh, to, to lubricate the surface between the heater and the container the fluid is in. This can also be assured by making sure that there's little heat loss to the environment, which can be achieved by wrapping the fluid container in an an insulated material called cladding. Now what we're going to look at in this process is looking at calculating the energy transferred per second or the power of the heater. So you can work out the power of the heater by doing the mass flow per second times by the specific heat capacity times by the change in temperature. Now we can also use this to actually also work out the uh, work done or the energy supplied by the heater or in fact the specific, the specific heat capacity of the substance. Now to, what you do to do to do this particular calculation is you set up the experiment and let the water flow at a steady rate until the water out is at a constant temperature. Now you would record the flow of water and the duration of the experiment which allow you to work out the mass flow per second.
You can then measure the temperature difference between the two thermometers before heating and after heating. Now the energy supplied to the water we know as Q is equal to MC delta T plus H, where H is the energy lost to the surroundings. Now what you would do in this particular investigation is you repeat the investigation for the heater on two different power settings and then alter the mass flow per second to ensure that there's the same change in temperature for the fluid. So for the two experiments we know that Q1 is equal to M1C times by delta T plus H and Q2 equals M2C times by delta T plus H. Now because we know that it's the same fluid therefore C is going to be the same we're going to assume that H is going to be the same, hopefully zero. And then we know delta T is the same because we've changed our experiment to ensure that delta T remains constant. So therefore we can say Q2 minus Q1 is equal to M2 minus M1 C delta T. We can say this because H has cancelled through, the delta T is the same and the C is the same. So the only values that are changing are Q and M. So we can rearrange this equation and make C the subject. So we can say C, the specific heat capacity, is equal to Q2 minus Q1 over M2 m2 minus m1 times by delta t and that allows us to work out the specific heat capacity of the fluid via continuous flow heating now you might say how do you work out q because q is the energy transferred by the heater now because it's an electrical heater we can use an equation to work out the electrical energy transferred by the heater which you've looked at previously in the electricity topic so Q, the electrical energy transfer by the heater, is equal to V, the potential difference across the heater, times by I, the current through the heater, times by T, the time the heater is on. So that will allow you to work out the energy transferred by the heater. So you can therefore work out the work done or energy transferred by the heater. You can work out the specific heat capacity of the fluid or the power of the heater. So let's summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson. For a change in temperature, Q is equal to M times by C times by delta theta, triangle T, where C is the heat capacity and calculations can include continuous flow like we've looked at in today's lesson. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, you should be able to explain how work can be done into the internal energy of a system, define the specific heat capacity of a material, and then look at how you can measure the work done into the energy of a system using the internal energy. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on continuous flow heating. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. And as always, have a lovely day.